Oh, thank you. Uh, I'm Bishop Peter Gatimo Dongo. I love Christ as the Savior and the Lord of my life. In the name of Jesus, we welcome you now for another glorious moment of discovery. We acknowledge that you are a special friend to us and a special friend to Jehovah. Now that you love to hear his word, and uh, according to the Bible, Psalms chapter 1, it says, Brother is a man who, who, one of the ingredients that form a prosperous man is that your desire is the law of God. And you meditate upon it day and night. And you are part of people that God says, uh, whatever you shall do shall prosper. And God will truly, truly sustain you. Thank you for subscribing to our YouTube and Facebook. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you in the name of the Lord. Today, we want to embark on uh, part five. If I'm not wrong, it's part five of a refreshed walk with God. At such a time, after people have been suppressed, suppressed threatened, drained, that the taste of life, the norms of life have been shaken and threatened. And people don't know now where to go. But I want to declare by the word of God, the Lord has shown me there is a plan from the throne of heaven for God to release a refreshed walk with God. Let me say this to you, Fred. It is one thing to get born again. It's another thing to walk with God. Can you hear this, friend? Walk means covenant life. Walk means a life that has an agreement. A life has terms of agreement, covenant, where God is the main, main person in the agreement or covenant. And therefore, the Lord bless you. We have covered several areas, and today we want to summarize. We want to enter into the, maybe the final part by the grace of the living God. One thing that will cause us to be refreshed is to receive, to receive the second baptism in the Holy Spirit. Now, let us analyze some factors allowed Acts chapter 2, chapter 3, and chapter 4. In Acts chapter 2, when the Holy Spirit descended, the Bible says, and uh, the Bible says clearly in Acts chapter 2, uh, let me read it. It says, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. Note, the day was so refreshing. When, people, when Peter gave a sermon, and people ended up in, uh, actually, they were not requested to get saved. There was no altar call. It was a real revival when people said, and now when they had, when they had this, they were cut in their heart and said to Peter and the rest of apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? And Peter said, repent, repent, and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. For the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Can you, can you imagine? Can you imagine my friend? That day if you check your Bible. The Bible says those who responded to the gospel. You check that part down there. The Bible says and with many words. He testified and exhorted them, saying, Be saved 
from the this perverse generation. The Bible says in Acts chapter 2 verse 41, and then those who gladly, gladly received his word were baptized. And that day, about 3,000 souls were added to them. I would like us to get the meaning of this statement. The 3,000 people were added. You know, these days you preach to people, you say 2,000, 3,000 got saved, but they were not added. They, maybe you can have a crusade and 500 people respond, but only 20 or 100 eh, were added. Can you imagine the Bible acknowledging and confirming that 3,000 people accepted Jesus as Lord and they were added. In other words, no one got lost. They were all added. Now, you have been preaching maybe for the last 50 years, 30 years, and your church has never, has not attained this level of membership. Yes, Let's accept the truth. It, the Bible is this is not a symbolic number. It is actual number of people who receive Jesus. The Bible says they gladly received Jesus and were baptized. 3,000. In the upper room, there were 120. After people got saved, they became now 3,120. And the Bible says very carefully that the fear was among the many people and disciples did miracles and more people were added to the church. That's powerful, it's encouraging. These are very refreshing moment. Another refreshing moment is Acts chapter 3. When this, uh, at the entrance of the temple, there was a certain man who was lame from the mother's womb. And you can imagine, John and Peter healed this man. Peter said, silver and gold I have none. But what I have, I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And the man was lifted up, gained strength, received strength and warmth in the legs. And he jumped, walked, jumped, praised God. He did not run towards the gate. He ran towards the church altar. He ran towards the temple. And brothers and sisters, if you check the scriptures, the Bible says that day 2,000 people got saved. And the church within two days had a membership of 5,000 people. You can imagine. Days of refreshment. But now, Immediately after this miracle, there was a reaction. I'm talking about reaction that hurts, reaction that threatens, reaction that is so much, uh, so much negative and anti-gospel. And you know what happened uh, when Peter was arrested by the Sanhedrin? You know what happened when they were brought before this council? whose majority never believed in the resurrection. Majority never believed in the resurrection. And they were threatened that to don't preach about the resurrection again. Don't do it. And you note, those threats removes the refreshment. And I want to introduce to you a, a way of refreshment. If you go to Acts chapter 4, the Bible says here, Acts chapter 4, aha, uh -huh. when these people are released, if you check Acts chapter 4 verse 21, what happened to Peter and John? So when they had further threatened them, they let them go, finding no way of punishing them because of the people since they glorified God, they glorified God for what had been seen. Uh-huh. And you know very well, the miracle of the rain man who was healed 
If you check Acts chapter 4 verse 14, it says, And seeing the man who had been healed, starting with them, they could, not, they could say nothing against it. They could say nothing against it. And the Bible says they threatened Peter and John. And when they released them, Peter, the Bible says, so when they were released after threatening, the Bible says something. Let's see. Verse 23 says, and being let go, they went to their own companions, reported all that the chief priests and elders had told them. So when they heard that, they all raised their voice to God with one accord. I want to decree to you, my brother, however much the world in this season discourages ecclesia, that is the real church, the fellowshipping, gathering together, and fellowshipping together of the called out ones, I want to say we are going to use the or the available mechanism and the available methodology and the available chance to we maximize on it and we have to start this meeting which is a source of anointing revival renewal and refreshment i said to you john and peter went to their own companion and the bible says and they reported all the threat. The Bible says something. And when they heard that, they raised their voices to God with one accord. And they reported Pilate, Herod, and all these Antichrist people direct, not paraphrasing, direct to Jehovah. And you check. The last part of this prayer, the Bible says, if you check now, the one of the, the last part, that is Acts chapter 4, verse 29. Now, Lord, look on their threats. Look on their threats and grant to your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word. If we want days of refreshment, this is the main component of refreshment. And it is part of our main agenda, the main item, the main prayer item. We are saying, God, look at their threats and grant to the bishops, grant to the apostles, grant to all members in our congregation, grant to your servant that with all boldness they will speak. Speak your word. I say to the church today, it is one thing to be baptized with the Holy Spirit and you speak in your tongues. It's another level of baptism when God now baptizes you with the same Holy Spirit. But now this time in addition, you receive full boldness. Boldness, it has a broader meaning. It is the maximum strength required to face the threat. It is maximum evidence of heaven to face the disapproval of Antichrist. Because they say, grant us, we servants of the living God, grant us, grant us one thing, hallelujah, one thing, that with all boldness we will speak your word. I say now, those who are in America, where you are, I pray now, at such an hour when you have been silenced, when you don't even know how to reach out, you don't know what to do, I want to say to you, these threats we are experiencing are antichrist, and they are intermingled, interwoven with some funny, 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 funny things that seems to uh, to be the norm, the standard of all, every person. But brothers and sisters, God cannot withdraw his mission. God cannot withdraw the high commission. He says, go ye 
and make disciples in all nations, baptizing them in the name of God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And I am with you always, even at this age of COVID. He is with us always until the end of time. And now if you go to Mark 16, it says, And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They will speak in new tongues. They will cast out demons. They will lay hands on the sick and the sick will recover. God has not withdrawn his mission. God cannot suspend his mission. I say it is still there. The Bible says when the enemy comes like a flood, oh, our, the Holy Ghost will raise a standard. And if the Holy Spirit is raising, what Christians need to know, to know is that we may not operate the way it used to be, but the Holy Ghost will raise a standard. Which standard has the Holy Spirit raised? Which standard? Which standard? Because God will not submerge into waters. He will not be overwhelmed by the situation. The Holy Spirit will raise a standard. If they bring another attack, the Holy Ghost will raise a standard. My fellow bishop, I would like us to detect and to discern which standard has the Holy Ghost raised when the enemy at this point in life and in time has come like a flood. We need to discern. Look at the disciples. They could not continue as usual. They needed another level of baptism. And they said, this time, grant to your servants that in your name, they will speak your word with all boldness. That's the first anointing, refreshment. The second refreshment, the Bible says in verse 30, by stretching, by stretching, Stretching your heart out your hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant Jesus. Those are several things. One, we speak the word of God with our boldness, and God stretch out his hand and heal. And that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus Christ. Remember, if you go to verse 29, it talks about God grant your servant. Let me tell you, friends, we are in a time when God want to bring refreshment by a revival involving God baptizing us in a, with the Holy Spirit second time. In this manner, we receive all boldness that we need. And God stretch out his head to heal the sick, to release signs and wonders in the name of his Holy Servant and Lord Jesus Christ. I give God all the praise because when disciples or apostles made this prayer, it culminated, it, 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 it ended up with a baptism. Not like the one in Acts chapter 2 verse 4. This one is baptism with boldness. Baptism with power and boldness. The Bible says, and when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together, was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And they spoke the word of God with boldness. That is powerful. And when you see this, friends, first that it says, and with great power, the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace was upon them. And I say by God's grace, this is what the Holy Ghost wants to do. That's what the Holy Ghost, this is a method and a stage of a refreshed 
life. So, one of the ways to receive refreshment in our walk with God is we get the second level or the third level of baptism. This time is not only speaking in tongues, but we receive all the boldness to, to, to stop the threats of Antichrist and the confusion of new world order. And I say in the name of Jesus, as, we, as God grant us this, the powers of the air will break. The prince of the air will bow and the church will be connected with God. And the days of refreshment drawn from the throne of God will be experienced. Another thing is, uh -huh, is, is what we call a prophetic renewal. Our prophetic word. Prophetic word. Prophetic word. Prophetic word. Yes, there is need for prophetic word. Prophetic word. Let us go to 2 Kings. 2 Kings. 2 Kings. We want to see something in 2 Kings chapter 6 and chapter 7. 2 Kings. Let's read the scriptures. I want to declare another level of refreshed walk with God. Let's go there quickly. In 2 Kings chapter 6, we have this issue in, the, in, in Samaria where the nation was besieged and the city never had food. Let's go to 2 Kings chapter 6. Let's read together. Uh -huh. Let's go to verse 24. It says, And it happened after this that ben king of Syria gathered all his army and went up and besieged Samaria. Besieging. Now, when it comes now to besieging, it's like you are surrounded by forces of darkness. You are surrounded by the threats of nature, you are surrounded by some forces that blocks the flow of resources into your city or into your personal life. Yes, there are doorways leading to you. Doorway from this side. Doorway from this side. Doorway from this side. Some are financial doorways. Other are prosperity doorways. Other are family opportunities and family renewal. Oh, there are doors open to you so far. But what this season is doing is besieging families. Is besieging cities. Is besieging our youth. I say to you, we have a been hundred of today. A besieging demonic power that is coming in the level of compromise in a way that no one can resist even if people die we just compromise and flow with it we cannot allow this there should be a prophetic power around us to face this situation there are times when things are so oppressive the devil devil doesn't know that we have a prophet allowed the bible says the city was besieged and the Bible says very well, as you read, that is 2 Kings chapter 6. And then there was great famine in Samaria. And indeed, they besieged it until donkey's head was showed for 80 shekels of silver. That is $50. And one-fourth of cup of dove droppings for five shekels. Maybe this could be $30. And then, as the king of Israel was passing by on the wall, a woman cried out to him, saying, help me, help me. And then the king said, that's now a funny situation. If the Lord does not help you, 
where can I find help for you? And finally, they ended up saying, we need to attack the prophet. He is not profitable. We don't need God. And when they were planning to attack the prophet, you read 2 Kings chapter 7, that Elisha said, hear the word of God. Thus says the Lord, tomorrow about this time, a share of fine flour shall be sold for a shekel, and two shares of barley for a shekel at the gate of Samaria. I tell you, this one happened. This one happened. People were revolutionized. Economy was transformed. And I tell you, within a day, the people, residents, the citizens of Samaria, had a lot of gold in their pockets, and the most refined white flour, most fine, refined white flour, was sold at one shekel in a big container. Remember, if you check your Bible, the, the dung, dung, eh? people used to feed on dung. And dung was sold, the, the duff droppings were being sold at five shekels. But if you check now, when economy improved through prophecy, a big container of white flour, best quality, was being sold at one shekel. There was glorious improvement. You can't compare one, you can't compare the quality. You can't compare the price. You can't. And one, when the city was besieged, the droppings, the dung of dove was being showed at eight shekels. But if you check, I think it's eight shekels. We have read that already. It was being showed at five shekels. But if you go now to an economy when the supply, when prophecy was fulfilled, I tell you, the best white flour in the large container was sold at one shekel at the gate of Samaria. And people also had acquired silver and gold and good food. And I tell you things to our church. There was renewal and there was refreshment in Samaria. And by that time, the besieging demonic army of Syria had fled away. And left behind all the food, all the gold, all the silver, all the clothing, a lot of money, a lot of food. And all this food ended up in Samaria. That's why we say the riches of the enemy who attack us most likely will end up in your hands. And I say to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, as the Lord lives in Jesus' name, there is a prophetic word that will be followed by great, great changes, changes in the world, in obedience to the prophetic renewal. And one thing that you bring days of refreshment is the prophetic word. Where Elisha says, hear the word of God. Tomorrow as such a time. I tell you, we need a prophetic declaration. Now, I have been involved in such prophecy, and I tell you, it's so renewing. Do you know you declare something from the mouth of God, and it has to be done? You don't force it, but God follows his word to perform. And his word you never get out void. I say to you, God is going to release through me and you words that do not get out void. If he will follow, and I tell you by a prophetic connection, because people don't know how to connect now, there is a lot of vacuum between your mind and the reality, your mind and resources, your mind and blessing, your mind and money. But there will be, by the word of God, prophetic connection. I say to you as I speak now, there is word from the mouth of God that you follow brothers and sisters. And the Lord you follow them and follow the word in them. And it will be performed. And there will be a season of renewal in the church that will cause people... You know before, people will feel like uh, 
the blessing you have come from your own hard work. The blessing you have come from your own sacrifice. The blessing you have come from your own thinking and working. But I say to you as a prophet of God, there's going to be a connection through providential openings by Jehovah, through prophetic power, in a way that people will get rich. But they'll be saying, our God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above what we can think or ask. And people will just fall before God and acknowledge all the money we have comes from God. And another thing that you happen, because the blessing will be a product of, con of prophetic word that God will follow, there will be grace. There will be power to perform. God will follow his word in our lives. Can you hear this, friends? Whenever God releases perfect will, he follows it as his project. Even at weak points, God will still follow his perfect will to make sure, to make sure it never fails. And God will follow us by his word. God is want to renew us. Another level of renewal, renewed work with God, refresh work with God, and you hear this friends, is talent. In the name of the Lord Jesus, my Father, the God I serve, will start placing people at the center of their talents and performance and the product. And I tell you, the prosperity will be high. I say, friends, some of you, although you have been earning money, it's struggle. Let me tell you something. There's nothing better than this. When God lets you at the center of your talent, you prosper very quickly. You move swiftly. You buy one vehicle after another. You buy one property after another. When God puts you in your talent. Another thing that God you do is raising the church, hallelujah, to operate in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Just as it happened in the city, I, I was reading, I was reading a, a text in the Bible. If you read Acts chapter 8, Acts chapter 8, the Bible talks about the outreach, the work of God in Samaria. You can read it by yourself. In Acts chapter 8, verse 5 to 14, when Philip preached in Samaria, and there were miracles after miracles, and the Bible says, and there was great joy in the city. I say, friends, God is going to reach. We don't have to compromise with anybody. The gifting will make way. People will throng in churches. They will not care. But I tell you, God, you make church altar an attraction of nation through the gift of miracles, the gift of word of knowledge, the gift of prophecy, and the gift of healing. And when the gift is manifested, there will be great joy in the city. I said to you, prophecy plus gift of miracle, word of knowledge, and the gift of healings, I tell you, is going to cause great change and refreshment in church order. We need that, friends, in the name of the Lord. In the name of Another thing you need to do is start a covenant walk. Just agree with God. Just agree with God. If you want to start moving to us, your days of refreshment, can you make an agreement with God? An agreement of ministry, an agreement of righteousness, an agreement of, of sense of duty, an agreement, an agreement like the way you shall walk so that God you, will rely on you and know you will never shame his name. When that one comes, very soon you end up in renewal. The Lord will bless you. And finally, friends, the Bible says in Romans chapter 16, verse 20, and the God of peace. You crush Satan under your feet shortly. I say to you, my friend, this thing will not continue the way you think. The God of peace will crush Satan under our feet shortly. 
we will share what God declared in Genesis chapter 3 verse 15. That the seed of the woman, Jesus Christ, will crush the head of serpent. And God is making us partners and partakers of this victory. Because in Romans 16 verse 20 it says, And the God of peace will crush Satan at our feet shortly. Hey, my sister, don't cry again. God of peace will crush Satan at your feet shortly. Gentlemen, don't live hopeless life. Whatever you are undergoing is not indefinite. The God of peace will crush Satan at your feet shortly. And I say, your days of refreshment are begun beginning. And your refreshed work with God is now beginning. As I pray for you, it's beginning. I declare in the name of Jesus, according to the word of God, I release a prophetic anointing and a prophetic manifestation and breakthrough upon all people who are watching. And from today, prophecy, the word from the mind of God, will be released on this family. And God will follow it to perform it because it is perfect will. Father, in just name, I rebuke every form of oppression, every form of every form of pain that that uh, that uh, failure that has been inflicted on us. I rebuke it by the word of God and mighty God, whoever is watching now, I set him free from every demonic oppression, every form of fainting, every form of becoming weary, they now receive new strength and refresh life and they will walk and not faint, run and never be weary and mount up high like eagle. I declare it on my soul and all people who are partakers of this message in Christ we pray and believe.